Good afternoon, folks. Back with uh, another video, um, part two of the torque converter one. Um, the last time we talked about matching your torque converter to your rear end gear for street driving. So the idea being that at 60 miles an hour, you want the RPM to be equal to your rated stall. And one example that I came up with that seems to be common and would work well is uh, if you had a 373 gear and a 3000 stall torque converter, that would work pretty well on the street without too much slippage. Um, but now the purpose of a torque converter is mostly drag racing. So now I'm going to look at uh, how you match up your torque converter to the shift points that you use. Now I use one to two shift points because um, two to three, the RPM drop is actually less in any transmission I've seen. So the one that's important is one to two. And so that's the way I'm doing that, this one here. And uh, I have them listed here, five, 50, 500, six, 65, and seven. Um, that's about where it would be for a, a street and strip car. Um, obviously there's race cars that shift at higher RPMs, but I'm not going there really. Though if you follow the pattern, you can figure it out. Um, I calculated these using wallet, a Wallace racing calculator, which is easily found. So my example here is uh, with a mismatch to see what the consequence of mismatching is. Uh, this one here is a 4,000 cell converter and shifting at 5,500 RPM. So that would be basically putting a pretty hot converter with a fairly stock engine. And the purple line here shows what the RPM would be with zero slippage. And so you rev up to 5,500, you shift, and it drops down here to 32. Um, according to this calculator, 32.74. But with the 4,000 style converter, the true drop would be where the red line is. It would drop to about 4,000, and it would remain flat for a while until then it starts to go up once it, it's you know, it locks and it's going fast enough to um, work properly. Now this area down here makes kind of a triangle. This area represents slippage. Now if your um, stall speed is close to what the RPM drop is, it won't be too bad. But when it's a, a big difference, you know, 4,000 versus 3,274, that's, that's enough of a difference that it's going to cause slippage. And then when you get back to the purpose of the torque converter, it's to allow slippage at the start line so you can launch harder and that'll shave off probably half a second, maybe in some cases as much as a second. But you could be giving back half a second here, not to mention generating a bunch of heat. So this car here, in this example, if you went with a 3000 stall, you would probably be faster even though you would have a little bit slower 60 foot time because you'd have less slippage here. And it's possible you could go with like a 3,500, you know, a few hundred over what we're looking for and it'd be okay. But um, going this much over would definitely be a bad idea. Um, the other thing to consider is the torque converters um, stall speed is dependent much on how much torque the engine makes and also the load. And the load is affected by gear ratio in, in, in addition to weight. So when um, you're looking at this, 3274, now you can call up a converter company and have them spec you a converter, um, a custom converter, or you could get an off the shelf one, probably a lot cheaper. Now, depending on the, the weight of the car and the gearing, um, and the torque of the engine. If you have a small block uh, without a power adder, a typical small block without a power adder, um, you could probably go 3,500 and it would be okay there. But if you have either a large engine, like a 454 or, or larger, or if you have a even a small block with a, like a nitrous kit, a nitrous kit can add 200 foot pounds pretty easily. And so, with that case, you want to be conservative. 
So I'm thinking with most of the people watching this, uh, the idea is to be conservative because nitrous kits are super common at the drag strip. And so with this case here, a 3000 stall would probably be the best choice to make. But I've calculated out these other things to um, help make it easier, you know, without having to go to the calculator and do it yourself. So like if you're shifting at 6,000, um, this is showing a 3571. At 6,000, a 3500 converter would work great. And down here, I I calculated a 3500 torque converter in about a 430 gear would work really well. Now that, of course, <clears throat> a 410 gear is pretty close. You know, it's it's... It doesn't have to be exactly to the number, but these are good rules of thumb that this is giving you. And if you're going up to a 4,000 stall, uh, the calculator said 4, 491, like a 489 is a common one that you see listed, you know, that you could choose when ordering a rear end or a ring and pinion set if you're changing it yourself. And uh, going up to the 4,000 stall, uh, 6,500 to 7,000. If you're shifting up there, maybe that much stall speed is a good idea. Um, I didn't go to below 3000 because generally speaking, a 2500 converter will work with most situations. But um, as an example for myself, outside my next victim is an old Chrysler I used to play with that, that I parked years ago. Now that one has a 727 with a 2500 converter and 354 gears. Uh, made it to a 318 with 340 heads and a cam. Um, that combination worked great. It drove great on the street. It didn't have any hesitation or anything, even with a 780 CFM carb on a 318. Um, so that's a another example that's not on the board, but I know from experience that that one works. So here you go. Um, this is part two of the uh, torque converter section. And between the two, I think it, it makes it really easy to pick the right one. Take it easy, folks.